The Trinidad and Tobago Medical Association, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health, is hosting its sixth annual oncology conference themed Oncology, the Genesis of a Legacy. Uh, Dr. Nicole Sukan, she is a breast, she's a breast surgeon, and we also have Dr. Philip St. Louis, he's a, he's a neurosurgeon. Very glad to have you both you. to speak a little bit about this conference. Because many times I think people hear, okay, oncology, and don't take the next step. And so, so like, oncology is oncology and cancer is cancer. Uh, but talk a little bit about the conference, please, thanks. Right, so we're here to promote, you know, um, breast awareness. And we're here to establish screening guidelines and a screening program for Trinidad. As we know that um, breast cancer is the most common cause of mortality in women, you know, from cancer. And it's also increasing worldwide. So our goal and vision here is to have a screening program here in Trinidad. I'm, I'm wondering how the conference, what, what are some of the things that the conference is actually going to address to help to bring that to fruition? Well, the first thing we have to look at is garden data. Um, you know, as far as I'm aware, there's no data specific to, um, you know, breast cancer numbers and incidents in Trinidad. So our goal is to, you know, start up a program in which we start off with a registry. Um, a registry to see, you know, how many women um, are receiving screening mammograms. And the goal is early detection saves lives. But not only early detection saves lives, early detection and early treatment save lives. And we want to find out if there's a gap between obtaining a screening mammogram, getting a biopsy, and getting treatment. But in terms of actually getting the data, you, you're speaking to the need for getting data. And I, I tried to do a little online search with the National Cancer Registry, and I saw there were two online forms in terms of like for download. Uh, one was for 95 to 99, and the other one was for 2000 to 2002. No, I, I, would, I would love to believe they have more information. Correct. But in terms of getting, getting that information to the public. But Dr. St. Louis, what are some of the things that will actually be happening during the conference? Well, as you may know, there are many different countries and organizations that have screening guidelines in place. The American Cancer Society, the World Health, the Canadian, the British. There's none that is specific for Trinidad and Tobago or even this region. And how women and men, of course, develop this cancer. What age? How bad does it get? What uh, methods are available to treat her? How, how reliable is the testing and other such things? We don't keep data on a regular basis. So the intent is to try to first off identify what are the unique characteristics of Trinidad and Tobago and this region that make us different from the rest of the world that we should treat our cancers that are specific for that. And to do that we have to have a good screening program. Combined with the screening should be a surveillance program and a registry that now if you get screened and you're negative and you develop cancer a year later, we need to know that because something went wrong. We have a negative false negative. Just as well if you have a positive result and you get a diagnosis I mean, six months later and you get treatment a year later, we really haven't really impacted because at that point in time the cancer has gone that much further. As you know in most developed countries you get a screen and you're positive you get a diagnosis within a week or two. And what we're looking at here is to try to identify what are the challenges we face because that is it's translated into life and death and I think that's the goal of this conference is to try to identify those challenges put something in place that we can work with and at the end of the day three to five years later look and see how we need to modify what we have in place to suit this particular community and village administrative logistics are one thing mm -hmm. in terms of saying okay well these are the things that we need to put into and form a system with <clears throat> excuse me uh, but what about the other side in okay. terms of actually saying okay well Having the facilities is one thing. Mm -hmm. Having people make use of them is something else. Because actually this month there's an initiative where the, the people are trying to raise awareness about men's health and the prostate cancer, ha Correct. having people getting screened. Mm -hmm. But if it's there but nobody's making use of it, uh, where, where are we? I, 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 I shudder to think of the challenges that we face there. And I've only been back to Trinidad after being uh, uh, gone for maybe 35 to 40 years. I've only been back in a year. And I can tell you, trying to do anything uh, in Trinidad is ch it's a challenge. 
Um, I can only say that I'm optimistic that the present government and other governments to follow will adopt a pattern of trying to implement these measures that are uh, saving to the people and making things more efficient and more effective. And we have the tools. We have the tools. That's what's so challenging is to know that you have the tools, but I can't say that we're making the best use of them. But speaking about having the tools, uh, what kind of responsibility do you give the people who have the knowledge of these tools to get that information out? And I, and I, I speak specifically to you, Dr. Sukan, in the sense that some of your areas of expertise in, include saving nipples while, while doing mastectomies. Uh, I can see some people saying, well, how I, I'm going to be losing all these feminine aspects of myself, so I, I don't go in for information because I'm a little af afraid of right. what I will get. Right. And I see this all the time. You know, women are like, I don't feel, you know, unwell. Why should I go in for screening mammogram? And if I get diagnosed with cancer, you're going to remove part of my breast, and that's going to disfigure me. And I think we have to let women know and empower women that if we're able to detect something earlier, we can eventually save your lives. And now we have, you know, we have things like um, oncoplastic surgery, we have breast conservation surgery, which has an equivalent survival as a mastectomy. Um, you know, get them to know that the cosmesis with, and reconstruction is so much better. Um, that way they, they know that ultimately their lives are going to be saved if we can diagnose them earlier. When does the con when does the conference take place? The conference takes place on Sunday between, I believe, 8.30 and 2 in the afternoon. And just to add to what Dr. Sukan said, part of the conference is also developing an awareness program. I think that is critical. And part of it is also looking at the governance, which I think you alluded to. How do we put these steps in place? And I think we're trying to work with all the, the quote the term, stakeholders that would determine that we have some buy-in into a national program to combat breast cancer, starting at the first stage, which is developing screen line, screening. And we have to debunk some of the myths that are so rampant in the community. Some of the myths like what? So I get all the time in my office, does um, deodorant cause breast cancer? It's no. You know, um, does you know, drinking bottled water cause breast cancer? And it's no. So there's a lot of myths out there in the community. In terms of dealing with cancer in this region and looking at it as a case, uh, and I say region, Caribbean, and saying, okay, well, we need to treat with it, seeing that it is specific to the region that we're getting certain types of things. Uh, what does this mean for also alternative medicine? Or does that have a part to play as yet? Are we looking at how that happens? I think there's always a part for alternative med medicine. I always tell people you have to have an open mind. You can't close your mind because of what you know. You know, to, to the carpenter, everything is a, is a hammer and a nail, you know. We have to have an open mind. But it must be based on some scientific basis and rationale. And, 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 not, and not on just what you think or what you believe. Because that's where we go wrong. We have to have, you know, some type of... Uh, um, scientific basis for adopting a particular strategy or plan. And that's where I think we have most of the problems with the myths or the beliefs. What's your feeling, Dr. Sue? I, I agree. Um, and I think it's um, public education. You know, I think it's educating the women. Um, you know, educating the women in terms of, you know, taking care of their health. You know, putting that as a priority. And I think that's lacking. You know, um, and you know, once we're able to empower women that, you know, your health is our greatest concern and it should be yours as well. I think that's the message. Registration for this conference, when, when does it end? I think the, the registration online through the TTMA website is available. Um, I believe that the cost is $200 for uh, general public and $300 for physicians. You can also register, I believe, at the site, and the site is the Hilton Hotel on Sunday morning. With the registration, unbelievably, you get breakfast, lunch, and a coffee break, which to me is a deal. I think I go there just for the food, personally, and get the education, too. Uh, 
I see the uh, focus groups, the different speakers. Can you give me some of the, some of those names? So, so the I think the uh, the keynote uh, the, the address is going to be by Mrs. Rowley, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Sharon Rowley, the uh, wife of the uh, president, uh, prime minister. Um, then I think there are some uh, featured speakers like Dr. Sukran, and then I think the most important and 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 that is to basically get the the milieu in which we are operating, what is expected, what is the standards, what data we have available to us from the limited uh, information we have. Once that's completed, then we go into these focused work groups. And these focus work groups will be directed in uh, about four or five areas. Um, the screening guidelines and looking at general guidelines, the um, governance, uh, the diagnostics and uh, treatment, and also the, uh, public, the public awareness aspect. And these uh, uh, groups will then convene and have certain questions that they're going to ask. And at the end of that, they're going to all come back. And of course, they are moderators, facilitators, you know, uh, rapporteurs. And once they come back, then we will try to develop a consensus statement of the entire groups on all these different aspects that we've identified. And with that con uh, um, um, consensus statement, look at the governance that we need to do to, to put it in place as we move further along. So it's really not just a meeting to go and just listen to people talk. It's actually an you know, interactive communication to get a goal accomplished at the end. 